Welcome to the Freeing the Wild Women podcast. I am your host, Autumn Brienne, and together we will play with the paradox of untamable beauty, fierce love, and explore what it means to be truly wild. My wish is for this show to inspire you to sink into your natural rhythms and cycles. So take off your shoes, sit with our beautiful earth, and get ready to run with the wild women. Hello, Olivia. Welcome back to the Freeing the Wild Women podcast. Hi, babe. I'm going to pretend that we didn't just giggle for 10 (laughs) seconds in silence before you said that. (laughs) It's such an honor to have you on. As always, thank you for existing. Thank you for being here. The wind spirits agree. Can you hear that? I can. It sounds like a gentle whistle. It's very loud, but I'm glad it sounds gentle through the mic. And I'm really excited for the conversation we're going to have today and the portal we're going to open. This is part one of a two-part podcast series Olivia and I are doing. And Liv, how would you feel about reading us some of your writing to start us off today? I would love it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to start this part one of Venus Codes. And I'd love to start by sharing something that came through my meditation the other morning about our desires and how deeply we are allowed to receive them really. And the word that I use is God, but feel free to fill in spirit or source or love for wherever it came from, because what I received is also available to you. So here it goes. The things you desire so deeply are so because they are gifts that I am to give to you. I have embedded this sacred desire in you ahead of time because I too equally desire to give you all that you want. See that when you try to make it happen, go after it yourself or force, you are trying to take credit for the gift that I am purposed to give you. It is self-righteous at times. You block yourself believing it will not come to you as you breathe. It is my gift to give to you every time. Only I, my mighty power, light, and heart can make happen all that I plan for you and that which you desire with ease. Allow me, sweet one, breathe easy and enjoy every gift that leads to the next. So beautiful, Liv. What a beautiful lens to look at our purpose through, knowing that there is a purposer who bestowed within us the ability to receive life. So much life. And it takes so much responsibility almost off of us, or that's what I feel in my body. I'm like, okay, like I don't have to make it all happen. However, my responsibility, if you will, then becomes being so deeply present to my experience and in my body and in my joy and in my play that I can actually receive what's mine or what I desire, Mm. right? But I don't have to go out and get it as much as I really thought I used to have to do. Right. There's relief in that. There is. And if we are really real, it's like no matter what we're doing, no matter where we are in this world or what tragic thing may be unfolding in our personal dramas, like wherever we are, if we looked around in like a 10 foot circumference, we would find beauty. We would find abundance. We would find life shining its light at us. Like, hello, here I am with you always. With you always. Like that, that trips me up. I had this thought recently that was like your body, you in your body is the only person that has been with you every single step of the way on this life, (laughs) you know, like Uh your mother who has seen probably a lot of your life has not been in the room with you every time was not, you know, with you when you moved across the country that time and like had those months to yourself, like you are the only person that I've seen every single way of you. 
Mm. You've never left you. Mm. And like, I feel like as much as sometimes we think that we leave ourselves or we get lost or we, you know, don't know where we're going. It's like, but we're always here. Right. Like our, and we always, always will be. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're always going to be here. We can trust that. Gravity is not going to like peace out and our feet are going to, you know, be plucked up from the rootedness that they have on this earth. And then we'll not, you know, like we're always going to be here with ourselves. And sometimes I feel like the gift is as existential as that. Yeah. Here. <laughs> right. Cause with that, I feel like, yeah, there's so much permission and so much certainty and so much deep knowing and the, the complexity of being a human is that because I've been here with myself every step of the way, like I know how shitty I am too, you know? And like, I know how much I suck sometimes or how mean I can be. And I feel like that births like these little personal demons that then stop us from feeling the beauty and the perfection of the fact that we live on a planet that allows us to experience everything in that spectrum. Right. Um, Yes. And like the contrast though. Right. If we didn't have little demons, we wouldn't be so aware to how, you know, much we've grown. Right. And how much we want to be kind or how much we truly like want to love and that that is our guiding compass. Yes. Right. We don't even know what we desire sometimes until we have the contrast of it, the not having it. And so it's like, again, existential gift, like, oh, fuck, I can feel everything. Oh, (laughs) fuck, I can feel everything. I will feel everything. So since I'm going to feel everything and that is unknown in this existence how can I feel it with so much pleasure with so much receptivity knowing that that's the if that's the gift God bestowed right like that's my purpose then to receive all of it yeah what how do we trust oh okay what is, what is trust <laughs> this is so I was gonna be like but how do we get ourselves into that place and I feel like trust is right like this deep trust Totally. What, what do you trust, Liv? What do you trust? Oh my goodness. This cycle of life, I am learning to trust that my body and my nervous system can truly hold whatever life is giving to me. And so I guess that's where I was going with that. It's like, as long as I can trust that life is good and that good things are available, good things want to happen to me, that this God, this love, this source wants goodness for me and if I can trust that then why wouldn't I choose to make every single experience that I'm having why wouldn't I choose to see that as okay I can trust that this is good too like even if I can't see it clearly right now even if I feel like I'm underwater like if it's happening to me I can trust that remember okay the podcast, Andy's podcast. Uh huh. Which one? He's like you. Or he's like you right now are the only version of you capable to handle what you have to handle. Yeah. You were fucking born for this in this moment, exactly as you are. Mm. Every decision you've ever made up into this moment put you perfectly where this is all there is. So trust then is inevitable and I oh this is so good because I feel so much with trust like just through my own personal you know living and lifing it always works out (laughs) it always works out like it's always fine even when it's not like even when it's not okay it it really and truly is like I am here with you today when spirits agree I'm here with you today and we we're creating so much beauty and we feel certain in that. And does that take away from the pain and the distortion, the not trust for myself I've had? No, that all happened. It's just like, even though that's all happened here, here I am. And here we are. And this is what the fuck we're going to do. And like way cooler. I think that all that stuff happened, right? The contrast of it, the demons, the darkness of it. Like, it's like, damn, all of that happened and I'm still abundant. All that happened and I'm still love. All that happened and I'm still filled up with the beauty of life. Like that's when you know it's real. 
it's like, it, I'm not just abundant or full of love or beauty or wealth because I was good the whole time or because I never had demons. Mm. It's like, it's not conditional on that. It's inevitable no matter what's going to happen. And I think when we have the contrast of scarcity or broken hearts or, you know, lack or whatever it is, like, and then we still hold that trust that it's going to come. It's going to come. Why? Because it's inevitable. We get to appreciate it that much more. Mm. Okay. This is the metaphor that comes to my mind. It's like a chocolate lava cake. And you're like, wow, this seems like a hard shell. Like, you know, I don't know what the, like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. And then you open it up and there's this ooey gooey lava center. And I mm. find that for myself, it's like melting, like letting myself just melt fully into where I am. And that's how I, I for a long time, I felt like, okay, to, in order to trust myself, I need to be someone different, basically. Like in order to really trust who I am, I can't feel this thing or I can't be this way. And it's almost like there's one all powerful source that is literally everything, meaning good and bad and light and dark, thus the experience of those are inevitable. Therefore, it's like, I don't need to be someone different to trust myself. I need to trust myself to be who I am right now. And I feel, and you know, Liv, you work so much with women in this exact realm, like finding safety and trust in their body. The feminine body hasn't historically been the safest place to inhibit because we were property at one point. And I think you and I have talked about this before, but when we do connect to that place of trust and when we do reclaim safety in our body, we're still going to feel everything. Like that part never goes away. Right. So what is that? Like, I, I understand how someone can understand this in their mind because I feel like I have for a long time, but the real true like embodiment of that, like letting ourselves get to that place of, okay, I actually can trust myself. Like I have the capacity in my cells, like my body can hold this emotion. My nervous system can hold this emotion. One, that's incredibly abundant. There's so much beauty there, right? There's so much love there. Infinite. Infinite. uh, Infinite possibility. But like, it's scary in a way. There's like a, how would you invite our women into dipping their toe into this kind of place? It's interesting. I forgot two experiences are coming to mind. One that I had quite recently, a few weeks ago of like finding my edge of darkness, like finding a really scary space in me. And um, one that I had about um, almost two, two years ago now. Um, And it was that moment where, you know, once you start spending a lot of time in the body and you start you know, familiarizing yourself with these pieces that are just trying to keep you safe. A lot of it can become very loving, right? And it's not so often, though it can be, that we really find an edge that's like, oh shit, this feels like a big one. Like this, even though I've been spending like years (laughs) in the body now, like this one, I don't know about that. And so I guess the one that I'll speak to most, oh, whatever, we'll do both. So two years ago, I was really starting to finally explore my rage and my anger. And I lived a very long life, 26 years, pretending that I was very, very happy for everyone, you know, just didn't want to inconvenience anyone with any emotion that was quote bad. Um, I always wanted to be a very, you know, happy place for people to land, to cheer them up, you know? And so I started getting really honest with myself. And I think that's the, pr- the prerequisite really of being in the body is you, you got to choose and devote yourself to, I'm going to be so honest here because the body doesn't lie to us. The body is not here to play those games. <laughs> <laughs> the body is just here for the truth, right? And so the prerequisite here is like, we get to choose to be really honest. But two years ago, I was starting to play with like, okay, like if I were to be really honest that I'm holding rage, like where would I even find it? And how would it sound? And like, is there any, this is how I felt. I was like, is there any place in the entire world that I can be in private to scream as loud as I feel like I actually need to scream and like be as angry as I actually need to be? And I remember closing my eyes and I was home alone. I was living in San Diego 
and I was closing my eyes and kind of dancing and like starting to just get curious about where the rage was in my body and just get to know it a little bit, see if I could understand anything about it and see if it wanted to express itself. And it felt so big, Autumn, that I couldn't even keep my eyes closed. I was afraid to have my eyes closed. I was afraid to be in the dark. And I was like, holy shit, like this is a huge thing. This is a huge thing. And so my process with that was like, okay, and this is what I'd love to give to our girls. It's like, when we find a space in our body that feels so scary, we get to remember that we don't have to shock our nervous systems by diving right in, right? You said, how would we invite our girls to just dip a toe in? So it's like, okay, like I'm sensing that I have this rage or this grief or the shame or whatever this scary thing is. And I know that I don't have to get rid of it all immediately. Like I know that I don't have to just express it all immediately. What would the first step be in me acquainting to this piece in me learning to trust this piece, right? So that I get to trust as my consciousness that, okay, this piece isn't so scary if I just dip one toe in and it feels a little safe to explore it, but also so that that piece in your body gets to trust you, your consciousness, that you're not going to come in and just try to excavate it and invalidate its experience because it loves you and it's in your body, whatever it is, to keep you safe. And it serves a very important purpose. So there's a two-way dialogue that has to happen when it comes to trust with the mind and the body, right? Um, and then even more recently, I was like, I hadn't felt that feeling in a very long time. And I was feeling really afraid to let things go. A lot of transition happening in my life. And I was having to let go of where I'm living and all of my possessions, it feels like, and my identities and just a lot of, you know, death happening in my world and <clears throat> it felt like too much for my nervous system I felt really scared and so I decided to do a body dance again and just see if I could dance in the like consciousness of this death experience that was happening if I could have a moving conversation with what I'm feeling in my body right now and what this awareness like what the the, all the death that was happening in my life, like the consciousness of death. If I could dance to her and speak to her death and hear what she was trying to tell me, then maybe I could understand her better and come to love her. And I mean, I was scared chillest for a second. It was the middle of the day. And I was like, oh my God, like this death consciousness is so potent and she's so dark, the dark goddess. And I've been with her before, but she's taking me even deeper, right? But you know, we get to explore safely our edges there. And of course, what I found when with dancing with her was that, oh my gosh, she had so much trust in me to present herself in my life right now. She had so many gifts to give me just by me letting her be here, right? Like her presence was the gift because I had something to teach me, something to remind me. When we give ourselves the space to feel like that, like you were expressing, Liv, like feeling beyond, like infinite feeling, like feeling beyond intellect, feeling that exists almost in, not in this, on this realm, like it is because our body is like, you know, funneling it through, but it's like, oh my God, there is this like layer of existence that is fucking rage. And when I taste it or when I like let that come into my feeling, is it going to take me somewhere else like will I no longer be me will I become this dimension of rage like will my timeline go there will that just be who I am um because <laughs> that I feel like that's what I fear the most in those moments like if I have something like like I have a Sagittarius Mercury okay like sometimes something wants to come out and I'm like this is the meanest fucking thing I could ever say if I say it, will I be like, will I be that then? You know, will I go there? Will this be who I am? And oh, this is why I love, like, this is where divine beauty comes in for me because it's like beauty that is not pretty nor ugly. It's just like this beauty that allows existence to be 
both like to be both beautiful and ugly it's this beauty that transcends what our mind can intellectualize almost and when i have i'm gonna say the bitchiest thing i could possibly fucking say <laughs> whether i say it or not like me just allowing that piece of me to exist without thinking that she's good or bad or that that dimension is good or bad or that if i am this then i'm not this if I can just let that exist, I'm learning that, oh my God, I can just like be more of me then. Like I can hold myself more. I can stay in my body more because I'm not afraid of my own self-punishment that will take me out of my body because suddenly my body is not safe to be in because when I'm here, I mean to myself. Yeah. Because how beautiful that after 26 years of being who you wanted to be, to be loved, right? Who you wanted to be, to be ex accepted and seen and for your mom and for your dad and all the other do -do -do layers and people that you got to dive in with the dark goddess and like go into the dark and that you can accept her and not shame her out of Eden like Adam did to Lilith, right? Like, <laughs> 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 but you, we can reclaim her, right? And be like, no, actually- you teach me so much, not only about who I am, but, and who I don't want to be, but also who I do want to be. Right. And that's like, that's where it gets like polarity and duality. That's where it becomes non-dual because we, we have the capacity to hold two things at once in our body and within ourself. And that takes such like, I don't know, practice, <laughs> like this whole existence. Yeah. Which is so ironic, right? Yeah. But it's like, I, I was thinking about this this morning, like children are so abundant, mm. right? Oh yeah. Like, so, like my dad just told me this story the other day where he brought me to the, his courtroom. He's a lawyer and he's like, you got to sit in the judge's chair, like no, as a child, like no one does that. And I'm like, I, of course that doesn't really mean anything to me, but it's like children are so abundant. Like people just want to give to children right? Like give them this lollipop or like, you know, treat them, like show them this special thing, whatever to do. And it's like, when you're speaking, and I know you love like word magic too, but it's like beautiful, like be you to the fullness. Oh, yes. Make you so whole, the whole of it though. Like children are so freaking cute and like playful, right? And open and lovable, but they're also not ashamed yet, hopefully, to throw a temper tantrum right and to or be, to a be brat. like yeah fuck no yeah. yeah or whatever it may be yeah and it's like in that way children are so permissionary for us adults to just be all of us too right because it's like who's like i mean i don't know like are we really that afraid i don't know i was gonna say like i feel like when i hang out with kids i'm like I'll talk in the strangest voices or like, I can be literally anything. And they'll either totally. be like, that's funny. Or like, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're right. That was, that was pretty weird. But right. Thanks for letting me do that. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, moving on now. It's so true because, oh yeah. Then we get conditioned to be like nice, right. To always be happy or whatever it may be. We get conditioned to be, yeah pleasing to always be the one to balance energy so it's not tense that was my totally my jam as a kid and it doesn't take away everything else we feel though like that still exists that still comes up we just get really good at taming it and like you know quiet down like I'll put you in this little cage and I'll feed you twice a day and you know if that yeah if that once a day when I have that passing thought if I can hate this bitch oh my god just kidding a I'm cracker. Like, yeah <laughs> when in reality it's like this whole part of existence like and we talk about this so much live like and I'm sorry you all hear me say this so much but it's so important on the pole of life and death like birth and death everything is here and it's just so wild it's like hard to even believe that we were able to forget as like you know growing up being from children to like adolescence that we have always and everyone on this planet always feels everything that feeling is literally the guidance 
that was bestowed within us to know who the fuck we are as a little finite ego identity. It's magic. (laughs) It's so cool. How could we forget? Because we want to be loved. We want to be good. Yes. And like, what is good? It's like, I even think when we, it's like the root of that, it's like good enough to be loved, Mm -hmm. like good enough to be accepted, like, you know, and it's, it is like really, it's very visceral of the body, but it also is ethereal with this conversation that we're having of just like, trust is intangible. Like it's ethereal, it's quantum or whatever, you know, like (laughs) you choose to trust that, you know, your best friend's going to love you if you say, I'm sorry, I can't do this right now. I got to call you later. Right. Or that, you know, your family or your clients or whoever are still going to, you know, accept you if you say, I need a fucking month off or I actually have to cancel all of this or I have to change my program or whatever. And it's like, it becomes visceral trust when we start to, you know, take action as if this tr- belief that we're choosing trust in is so, right? But it requires both. It requires a really intangible like essence of it. And it, and it requires our bodies to proceed as if mm. and both our gifts both can open us if we choose to and how fun that we get to play in both too in you know in this body like we have a mind that that that's where that comes from I can intellectualize you know trust like that's the ethers it's like our thoughts what are they they're so deep they can go on forever and they're like little chemicals being transmuted between cell receptors like that's so intangible you know the the most intangible yeah, it's happening like every second. We can't turn it off. And how abundant, like how beautiful. And I kind of want to direct us back into just like Venus codes here for a second and diving into beauty and love. And I think what we're, we've been speaking on is really like the most unconditional love we could ever hope to bring into our body in this lifetime, like really being able to be with the fullness of this experience for ourselves and for the people that we love. Um, totally. Totally. I don't, you know, that's like, that's beautiful love. So beautiful. And okay. This is, this could be a fun exercise when you feel into love, what shape does it have for you? A heart. <laughs> yeah. A heart. Cool. Libra moon. <laughs> Libra moon. <laughs> Your Libra moon. Yeah. If anyone needed to wonder, if anyone's curious why this is Venus code, it's because Autumn is a Libra moon, Olivia is a Taurus moon, and we are both ruled by Venus in our emotions. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. <laughs> okay. So if any of our listeners want to tune into their visceral experience and this feeling of if you were to look at love, if you were to feel it in your body, or if you were even to imagine love as an essence, having like a shape of a diagram, if, it, if someone were to like map out what love would be, if it had a shape and just start to explore what, what feels real for you. I'm going to share what love feels like in my body. And to me, love is a circle. Like love is this spaciousness where anything goes where all is welcome and it doesn't have sharp edges. It doesn't have closures or contraction. It is this sense of truly love being wild acceptance, right? And we get to choose. You can stay in your body if you're still feeling or you can come back to presence and open your eyes. But if we're to feel into love, has this all-encompassing, all-welcoming circle, we get to choose then that nothing is excluded out of here. If everything that ever existed was in this circle, this pie chart, if this was, if the pie chart was life, right, and, and death, 
and exist the, the pie chart was existence really <laughs> right and everything was in here and love could be our circle like our love could be the name of our circle we get to choose not if we're going to be love or if we're not going to be love because we already are because we're part of this existence this circular you know existence we then get to choose just how much love we welcome in do we let our circle get really small if we're not feeling safe to receive or accept a lot of life, accept what life is given to us? Or do we let our capacity to hold it all, just like we've been talking about, right? The duality of it. Do we let it get so big that we can be receiving wild wealth when we're in fury and rage, right? Or we can be deeply receiving connection and intimacy with loved ones while we're grieving, right? These really contrasting experiences that there's room for all of it at once. That's what love feels like to me, right? For myself, but also with another, right? All of your wicked ways, your divine splendor is welcome here. Beautiful. Aww. So, so true. And I even think about the, you know, like my example of polarity, if temperature like I if temperature is the the pole and on one end is hot and one end is cold they wrap back into each other like is a circle like it all exists in that container of of everything and how comforting and just like oh hopeful and inspiring to imagine a place maybe it's an internal place or an external place where we can like let this love live where we can even you know no matter what we're feeling even if it's like I'm pissed like actually I don't feel love that that can exist within this circle and be okay and be allowed and be heard and seen like if there was no piece of me if there was no piece of me that I didn't have to hide from the world you know or hide from myself like if there was no piece of anything that we didn't have that we weren't that we could look at like that we could not invite in like hi I can see you I can be with you um I feel like love and this is why like that what you were saying live of being just so kind and like adapting that state of being is so common or like it's like such a like this people pleaser thing because because we don't want because everyone feels everything and we don't want to like make people feel bad for what they're feeling or triggered for us feeling something about what they're feeling. And it gets incredibly complex at this point. So if we're going to navigate this level of love, of like all encompassing, accepting love, but still interact with other humans and have our own experiences about what's happening in the world, how do we embody that circle? in that place of like, okay, I, I want to love and like, I want to honor what I feel. Hmm. Hmm. Well, the first word that came up for me was boundaries of like knowing, you know, because we do live in a society that has really um, like shamed the bad stuff or, you know, really asked of us to not be a whole circle, really asked of us to only participate in the really sweet, the cute things, the really like appeasable things. Semi-circle. Yeah. Yeah. We're in this like weird semi-circle and it's like, you know, I think, you know, for my personal journey, it's like we get to really fill out that circle in ourselves first, right? So we get to spend a lot of time alone with the parts of us that maybe society or even ourselves had have deemed bad just so that we learn to understand them and we find our own love for them it's really hard to set boundaries for something you know with another person if you're not already in tune with what you want to speak or what you want to stand by it's really hard to um self-preserve or protect something in yourself from another person if you're not willing to protect it from your own mind or your mm -hmm. own self-punishment and so you know it's so beautiful I think both of our work the work that we do with women is like really encouraging this divine love and this divine beauty of like and of course you know it's cliche but I 
as a poet, I'm like cliches, eh, but then I'm always like, oh my God, the cliches just fucking hit. They hit for a reason. And it's like the one that it's like, you know, you can't love another until you love yourself. It's like, you can, because we're all love and you can only love someone to the capacity in which you've loved yourself. And if you can't, I won't put it like that. If you haven't spent time to, to simply get to know the parts of yourself that feel really scary or shameful and learned in your nervous system and your body that, oh, it's actually safe for me to be this right now, or it's safe for me to hold this, even if I'm in private with a blindfold on and sitting in the dark of my room and I show it to no one, right? If we can't, if we're still learning to access that, it's going to be really hard for our nervous systems to hold that from another person because our mind and our body is still going to be in the um, like attunement of that's bad or that's scary. And even if we're saying, and this is where I got really caught up people pleasing, like even if we're saying, no, like your wickedness is welcome here. That's okay. You're allowed to be, you know, dark or bad, da, da, da. the energy, like they can feel your body is closed off to them. Right. So we can say like, all of you is welcome here. But also if we're not used to like loving all of our parts of us that are really scary, we're not really going to be able to embody that for another. Does that answer your question a little bit? A hundred percent. Yeah. That's a chef's kiss to that answer. So good. I think it's really important too, like this notion that like, you don't have to love yourself fully to love someone. You don't have to be healed in order to, you know, live your life or share healing with others. Like this, like, I think there's a really um, like controversial and harmful like notion in our society that's like you have to get to this arrived destination before you can da 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 and I just I simply don't believe that because again like it's about trust and it's about choosing what we believe in this ethereal you know thought quantum realm whatever but it's like I choose to believe that we're all love right now and it's not, I can't love you if I haven't gone there myself. It's that if I haven't gone there myself, I can't love you to the capacity that maybe I could if I had gone there myself. And that's okay for me. And that's the capacity that I want to stay in. And that's the capacity that you want to stay in. And fine. Mm-hmm. You're still love. Right. You can't not be love. Right. But it's, it, I just feel like it really, this life comes down to how deep we're able to open in order to receive what we want, right? That sacred desires that I shared right in the beginning of our call, like your desires want you so bad. They want you to the proportion that you want them in, right? And it might be a really big desire of yours, this like dream love relationship, right? But if we're not willing to open for the dream love relationship, then the desire is going to say, well, I really want her too, but I don't know if I can really trust her, Mm. right? Like energetically speaking, if we were like, "Uh, I really want the relationship. Oh no, I'm fine in my current one. That's like not really fulfilling to me. I really, really want the dream love. Oh no, this one's fine, right? Like our desire is matching us in that. Right. I really, really want Olivia so badly. I want to give this to her. Oh, I don't know. I I don't know if I can give it to her. Right. Right. So what happens if we just claim it fully? Right. Open for it fully. And then we get everything we want. And we get what we please. please. <laughs> I suppose, <laughs> hypothetically, one would just get everything they please. They would just get everything they've ever desired if you were to open so fully, right? Mm-hmm. Trusting in your body, trusting in life. It's what like... You want to, what if, I'm curious, what would you, like, what would you share with sisters of like, when the love well is running so dry or when the beauty well of life is running so dry or the abundance well of life is running so dry, like, what, it, what can they focus on in order to get the stream running again? Mm. Always nature, always nature. Like, just go be with the mother who is everything like we live on a planet that is constantly showing us this concept like what we are talking about and maybe you get it in some ways it feels resonant and it's like in the mind 
if we're in nature, we see it happening. And I mean, we can't not be in nature because it just all is. Everything we have, whether it be plastic or a cardboard box or our fucking blanket on our bed, like it's all a reworked part of nature. Like nothing here is not of this earth. But when we do just like go into a place of observation somewhere, maybe in solitude or just like somewhere that automatically sparks beauty within you, you're going to see spiders eating flies. You're going to see rivers that have spilled over. You're going to see trees that have fallen down and you're going to see like creatures mating. You're going to see the sun like shining so perfectly through trees to cast this golden glow that makes the water sparkle. You're going to see flowers blooming. Like you're going to see it all. And when we're in nature, we're not like, wow, this would be so much prettier if, or this would be so much more loving if we're like, this is incredible because I believe in that space, our body is like, oh yeah, like it all is here. Like it all does exist here. And we even watch her like cycle through seasons and change every single season. Like she is always showing us the truth, which is it all exists and it all changes. Like that's who she is. That's what she's doing. She is our mother. We all came from her. Everything came from her. When we're with her, how can we, you know, not remember or at least put a little more in our well? And I know I can be in a place where I'm super like, okay, I have a priority list of things that are like more important or that I need to get done. But anytime I really just let myself like go refuel my well when it's running dry, I have more to give. I have more inspiration. I have more creativity. So I think that if we can prioritize whatever is for you, and I mean, your cup of coffee can be that gateway into love and and beauty. Um, Hashtag coffee codes, but... But seriously, like magic exists within every sensation. Like, okay, get this, y'all. You come to a planet through the body of another being, and you are born this helpless creature, and you ah, <laughs> scream, you vocalize, you're taking in scents and smells, and you're hearing things, and it's all incredibly overwhelming. You realize that this one person at least is going to like hold you, your mother. She's going to feed you. So your nervous system starts to regulate to that. Like I'm safe in this environment. Like this is all happening. We grow up. We have these like now the same little infant body that came from another person's body has the ability to now reproduce in whatever capacity. And in between that period, we've had our heart broken. We've fallen in love. We've ate the best food. We've ate things, we've tasted, we've touched, we've smelled, we've wanted, we've yearned, we've slept, we've laughed, we've cried, we've done everything already. Like, and you're barely 20 years old. Life is constantly giving us opportunities to be in love with with anything, with everything, with our cup of coffee. And I feel if we can allow ourselves to just like open up a little bit of space. And like, this is maybe a way we can build that capacity to hold two things at once. Like I'm hurting so bad right now. I'm so sad right now, or I'm existential as fuck right now. And I don't know why I exist. Can you also like breathe in a little air, like expand your rib cages enough to fit something else in there with that? Like maybe it's my coffee or maybe it's nature or maybe it's calling my best friend. Maybe it's your cat whatever it may be, maybe it's going out in nature, but just inviting beauty and love to exist with also what you're feeling and knowing that they can exist at the same time because they are the same thing, just in two different faces. So good. So good, babe. And I love how in it, in a feeling sense, like, I feel like one of the feelings that came from that is like being grateful for like mm-hmm. all of it. And I love how you weren't just like, make a gratitude list. Cause honestly, that shit pisses me off sometimes when I'm feeling so scarce or like my well is dry. I'm like, sometimes I don't oftentimes actually in those moments, I'm like, I don't feel like sitting down and making a list. Right. Or I don't feel like 
I mean, honestly, a lot of times I will end up just talking to myself out loud. That helps my body more than writing the list. But it's mm-hmm. like, I want to feel something deeper than just a list. I want to feel something. And I guess what I'm saying is like sometimes in those moments when I'm feeling scarce or afraid or in lack, my body doesn't want me to write my way out of it. She wants me to feel my way through it. Mm -hmm. and so I love what you said it's like go out into nature go you know feel what is already there inspiration beauty love the permission of acceptance of nature being you you taught this in the coven last week like nature is in New England right now going into winter but in the southern hemisphere at the same time she's going into summer and like wow adding that layer on already the microcosm of nature of like, oh, a bird's dying over there. And then I hear a baby bird chirping up here. It's like a trip and a half. But something that really transformed my abundance journey, my, um, yeah, like my abundance experience recently is, well, I've been playing with, with this all year, but this statement gets me back to my body every single time. The statement is, this is the best moment of my life every time. I've said this when I was crying on the beach, even just this morning. (laughs) Like I said this when I had, you know, signed a new client, when I was just eating dinner with my mom, like every single moment, that statement brings me so far into my body that it's like, there's nothing else that exists outside of this moment. There's nothing, all of these good things that I think and know are on the way, they're actually not real until they're real. But in this moment, even if I had $1 to my name, if I could sit here in this moment and say, this is the best moment of my life and I have $1 to my name, that would already mean that I'm somewhere safe enough to close my eyes I'm safe enough to talk. I have self-awareness enough to have gratitude. I'm breathing. I'm alive. In that moment, even if I had $1, I am abundant because I have everything that I need. I think true abundance really is not having endless amounts for the rest of your life as this like stored away, hoarded acorn of a squirrel life situation it's like true abundance is having what you need every time Mm -hmm. not more abraham hicks always says something to the effect of would you really want your life supply of money right now or would you rather like live each moment and let it come in like in surprising unexpected ways and enjoy the unfolding of it and it's like duh, like we came here to feel, we came here to feel what else? Like we are like a nervous system with like our bodies since a little babe, like we came here to feel this experience. So let's fucking feel it. Like how beautiful. Yeah. That's Venus. What could be more Venus codes? Like (laughs) we came here to feel it all, all of it and really feel it to our bones. And we're going to be okay. Even if, I mean, even if we die, we're going to be okay. Right. Like where were we before this life? We're all going to die. Like there's no, in that, you know, there's no ultimate bad that is going to take us somewhere that we're not already going to go, that we're not already going to go. So, okay. How empowering, how much responsibility and how much fucking beauty all exists in that. And relief. And relief. Re-life. Re-life. Like, ah. This is, okay, this is a thought that I'd love to share while we're on this part one, because I know we have so much to play with for part two as well, and it's just, well, really just an abundant well. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the thing that, what's your thing in life? Like, what gets you into your flow? Mm. and we, you might have a lot especially because you're a Manny Jen but like yeah. and for those listening like I'd love for you to feel in like what's that thing in your life that you're just like this is what I love like this is me like this is my thing 
I I love magic. Yeah. I love magic. Like I love just like in this like geeky quantum reality herbs, flower essences. Like this is my sweet spot. Like here I'm like, Oh, like this is why I'm here to experience the sensation of I can hold totality, you know, and like flowers hold totality and the owl holds totality and really this like connectedness, like primal, like yummy chocolate cake, like mm, coffee, like ah, I want this. Yes. Mm. yes. And, and has magic never not been there for you? Oh, never. Never not. Have you ever not showed up for magic? Have you ever one day just been like, eh, forget about magic? No. <laughs> right? And so in that sense, like, I believe that like true abundance is what our, it, true abundance in our life is demonstrated most in our chosen path to God, to source, to spirit you keep showing up for magic when magic is brilliant and when magic hurts you maybe when magic gives you everything and maybe when magic takes a little from you or causes you to grieve Mm. right and magic therefore keeps showing up for you and for you it's magic you know for you know one of our babes it might be music or singing, right? For me, I, I feel like it's relating. I, I feel like it's like love or, you know, maybe maybe in a romantic relationship, but also just like intimacy with my friends and um, just relating with other people. And, you know, we access totality when we stay with it. We don't leave when it gets bad. Mm. We keep showing up to love it in full or all all that it's given to us, the ache and the glory. And so it's like, to to you and me and to whoever's listening, it's like, you have already mastered abundance in, you know, Venus codes in an area of your life, this area, this thing that you love, that you've devoted yourself to without even consciously choosing maybe. So what lessons can you pull from that? to place in all the other areas of your life that you're still building wells up for, that you're still building your reserve up for. So beautiful, Liv. So beautiful. It feels like, yeah, thank you. It's so funny how we have, like, we fucking know. Like, we, how many times, I don't know, that I hear you or me or, like, anyone, everyone say, like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, saying something and being like, I don't know. But we fucking no we know what we're here for we know what lights us up we know what we love we know how we want to be received we know how we want to give we know we know and we that's know. we fucking know how could we not we, we feel everything it's, as soon yeah, as you say it not, I, yeah 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 it's not even about it, it that's a fib that i yeah. don't know right <laughs> like we actually i think oftentimes what we actually mean is I don't know if it's possible mm. or I, I'm doubting it, mm. right? Because it's like, we know what we want. We just don't always believe that we can have it. Right. We know what we want. We just don't know if we're going to allow ourselves to have it. Yeah. And, and I wonder like if that was your journey too, with like connecting to your desires. Like at first, one of the stories I had was like, but I don't know what I want. Or like, I want everything or mm-hmm. I don't know what I want. Is it, is it too much? That was like, I want this, but it's too much. So let's like dilute it. Yeah. But you knew what you wanted. And oh, yeah. Enoughness. And all it's as muchness. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew what I wanted. I just wanted everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it's like we get to figure out how our desires from our bodies and the abundance of our bodies communicate to us right? And we get to wipe away all the foggy, filmy stories that we have that prevent us from thinking that we don't know exactly what we want. And then we just get to choose to open. Mm. We just get to choose to trust. Right. Over and, and over works. again. It's a good start. Yeah. It's a perfect start because also like with this like ultimate truth, like we're here to just 
experience it and to be it and like there's really and truly nothing to become like you don't have to live you know beauty first or love first if you don't want to you get to if you want to and you get to play that game and you get to have fun experiencing it and you get to maybe chocolate cake tastes sweeter or your friends feel more loving or magic seems more real when you do you know choose to like go on this journey of totality and it's not going to take the sweetness from chocolate cake or from your friends or from magic it's not going to make magic any less real we get to play the game we want to play we get to have fun we get to experience we get to laugh and grow and fall down and get back up and do all the fucking cliche things that we're destined to do no matter what because here we are and like on planet earth it's just do i want to allow myself to dream the biggest dream i can do i want to allow myself to love the biggest i can possibly love do i want to feel the most feelings i can possibly feel maybe you don't because that it's, it's a lot right and dare I say, I really feel like we all do. <laughs> How much do you want to experience in this life? Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Wow. <laughs> wow. Olivia, thank you for this beautiful part one of Venus Codes. I'm so excited to have you Back on next week for part two. Do you want to share with the babes what we're going to be talking about a little bit next week? Sure. Um, You're welcome. And thank you for hosting me and having this incredible platform and community of women on Freeing the Wild Women and for just really riffing with me about life. (laughs) I know. This was so good. So fucking good. (laughs) <laughs> always so good so much goodness so much abundance and so the three kind of beauty codes rather excuse me the three kind of venus code that we've been playing with for this part one and this part two these podcast babes are today we wanted to kind of dip our toes into beauty and love and next week we're going to pull on beauty and love a little bit more but we're also going to talk about venus codes as it relates to wealth and abundance in that department and really they're all super connected and beautifully entwined and just as we kind of close tonight it's like find your route to abundance your route to abundance is what you've already mastered loving and accepting so fully we're gonna play with how that shows up in finances (laughs) so juicy it's gonna be so good um wherever you're at with money right now, wherever you're at with self-worth, wherever you're at with like relationship to allowing yourself to receive what you desire. It's beautiful. It's perfect. And I'm so excited for you to tune in tomorrow because this has been kind of the theme of our year, dare I say, Liv. Like you and I have been on this journey of relating to money in a way that is supportive, in a way that is true, in a way that allows us to express and be. So We're going to have some really juicy things for you all. So make sure you tune in and definitely go check out Olivia. She's on Instagram at Olivia Morrissey underscore. And I'll have all that information in the show notes. Um, Olivia has a program coming up soon. The complete woman, which do you want to share a little bit about that? Actually. Oh my God. Herla Starkness. Duh. Do you want to share a little bit about that? I'm sure. So her less darkness is a three month journey for women who are, curious about really what we've talked about today of just befriending their own darkness and really what's on the other side of this this life that is available to them and rebirthing it um it's a feminine embodiment workshop and three months of it really so it's a group journey it's pretty in-depth and expansive and um i would say it has more of the feeling elements of grounding and body and um yeah, full circle feminine expression. Mm. Um, And I just want to plant the seed for like the women who've listened to our call today that Autumn and I will be sharing a very special something next week that we are coming together, a program that we're coming together to create. And um, I'll say that energy of this program feels a little bit more like play Mm. and um, celebration Mm -hmm. and yeah abundance so 
questions. <laughs> yeah, so we'll share more about that next week. So make sure you tune in to hear all the things. You can find links for connecting with Olivia in the show notes, of course. And we will see you all next week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending your time with us today. It's an honor. And we are excited to deepen this conversation next week. See you soon. See you then. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Freeing the Wild Women podcast. If this episode spoke to you, please send it to another sister that you think would enjoy this kind of content. If you leave us a review on iTunes and send a screenshot to the Freeing the Wild Women Instagram account, I will personally pull you an oracle card. Your reviews and ratings help the podcast so much, and I'm very, very grateful for you taking the time to do that. Also, the Freeing the Wild Women podcast now has a member-only portal. You can find us on Patreon. There will be a link in the show notes. And you can join us for online sister circles, guided meditations, member-only podcast episodes, rituals, and more. I cannot wait to see you over there. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your journey. I cannot wait to see you soon. I love you. Have a beautiful, beautiful day, sister. Mwah.